Hello, and welcome to the Cult is King podcast. I am your host this time around, Rambling Bones, joined by my co-host, The Duke. Yo! And if you're a reoccurring listener, you might have noticed that our intro is a little different. Yeah, new intro, and uh, you may be seeing in the corner of your screen, new logo. So you can uh, let us know what you think of those, or likewise, you can complain about them. We'd be grateful for the engagement. (laughs) Yeah, hopefully the new logo didn't confuse you. I know whenever a YouTuber or anybody changes their little icon, uh, and I'm not used to seeing it, it always causes mild confusion. But beyond the new things happening for us, I picked this week's movie, and this week's movie was 2003's not classic Windy City Heat. That being said, uh, there's a very good chance that if you're listening to this, and unless you just were searching Windy City Heat up by itself, you probably haven't seen this movie. It's also probably the one of the funniest movies you haven't seen. Yeah, this movie's definitely got a cult following. Uh, but that's because the star of the movie, Perry Caravello, has a, a cult following around him. Well, and this movie, while not the originator maybe of that, really kind of took it to new heights. But this isn't really a very traditional movie. Bones, could you kind of fill us in on what this is? So, we're going to definitely talk about this movie, but there's not a ton to say because this movie is a, a prank movie. And so the the plot would be us just going gag by gag, here's what's funny. And that would just ruin the movie. No, we'll talk about a couple of the gags. Yeah, there's really... definitely ones worth talking about. But what, what this movie is, is it's a prank movie. And unlike movies like uh, Borat, where it's Sasha Baron Cohen going from poor innocent bystander to poor innocent bystander and being insane around them this movie focuses all of its gaslighting on perry caravello which i think that it's important to point out because typically you couldn't make a movie where you're just gaslighting one person especially to the levels of ridiculousness that we see in this movie but perry is a special boy we will talk a lot about this special boy. <laughs> And so he's he's the kind of guy that you can just throw everything in the kitchen sink at, and he is completely unaware of it. But the general plot is Don Barris and Mole get Perry to audition for the movie Windy City Heat, and he's going to be playing the, the starring role of Stone Fury. Right, and he'll be co-starring with the two of them. Yes. And so Don explains away all the cameras as, oh, you know, they're making a documentary about the making of the movie. So there's going to be all these cameras on you all the time. Uh, Don't worry about it. And so the movie starts with the audition. It then moves into the, I think they make the movie in eight days, you know, as movies typically get made in eight days. Uh, And then... After that, it goes into the premiere of the film, and that's the finale. And that's that's the plot. There's there's not much to it. So how did how does a movie like this get made? There, there's a little bit of backstory with with Perry and Don and Mole. Perry did a, a performance at the Comedy Store, which is a stand up, a very famous stand up comedy like venue. And Don Barris worked and was like a a regular at the comedy store. Right. He had uh, this thing called, I want to say it was at this time, uh, it's called the Ding Dong Show, which he still does, I believe, uh, in some form or another. But at the time, basically what he would do is he would just find the most bizarre people. Kind of like Howard Stern would, except that he would kind of coach them a little bit and like, basically give them an outlet as like stand-up comedy and uh one of his discoveries was perry caravello who i'm told uh for his thing uh, at don's suggestion uh dry shaved his chest with a razor (laughs) well um it was apparently a hit yeah well apparently i think at their first meeting 
Perry bombed and threatened to kill Don. <laughs> um, and, and I think some members of the audience. And some members of the audience. And so, of course, Don realized he had struck comedy gold. And so Don and a guy named Tony Barbary, who I've... He plays the guy Mole. Mole is his character and the only way that uh, Perry knows him. Yeah, because Don has like a little cast of people that he's been using to uh, gaslight Perry. So there's another comedian who I forget his actual name, but he just always was Yergi, who's like some Romanian guy. So some Romanian dude who's always like flanked by attractive women uh, who's like. V- like Romanian or e- vaguely Eastern European. I'm pretty sure he's Romanian. Yeah, because the yeah. But the upon meeting Perry, Don started what is called the Perry Project, which is well, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure what the goal of the Perry Project is, other than maybe to make Perry a star or at least make a lot of money off of Perry. Now Don Barris and Tony or Mole were friends slash uh acquaintances to jimmy kimmel in fact i want to say either at the time or later i believe don bear still does like the warm-up for like jimmy kimmel's crowd yeah and this was 2003 so jimmy kimmel had just started jimmy kimmel live and had just finished the man show which was a fairly popular thing he did on comedy central with I believe Adam Carolla was also involved with that. And Jimmy, Mole, and Don put this movie together. And let's talk about Perry real quick. What, uh, what makes Perry so special and why is it that you can gaslight Perry? Perry is a very strange uh, individual in the sense that he's not like, there's no obvious mental handicap. Um, I believe at some point he did have a little brain trauma, but I'm not sure that that's... I think Perry's just one of those characters. And here's the thing about Perry. One, Perry is very, very quick to anger (laughs) uh, over every little thing. Perry will do anything to be a star. And also, Perry will just accept the most ridiculous circumstances presented to him as reality. Especially... Perry is especially very easy to gaslight if something touches on his ego or his anger. Yeah. And uh, both of which are sizable pools to draw from. And he also has a staggering lack of of knowledge of the world around him. Uh, particularly Hollywood. Uh, and of historic figures. Oh, yes. Because throughout the movie... He is confronted by people with names that should stand out to him, right, but like, do not. One of the my favorite jokes in the thing is all of the different characters he'll meet, like fellow actors or assistants or producers, all have ridiculous names. Like I believe the uh, John Quincy Adams is the producer. Susan B. Anthony is the secretary. Uh, there were a bunch more. Uh, Burt Ward, who played uh, Robin on. Uh, the old Batman show was the name of his assistant. Um, Roman Polanski is the a- actual actor. Dane Cook plays the casting director, Roman Polanski. There, there's literally a guy pretending to be oh, Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston, and Perry has no clue that this is not actually Charlton Heston. It just. I'm not sure he knows who Charlton Heston is. Exactly. I don't think he knows who Charlton Heston is. And literally, there is a a Japanese guy named (laughs) Hiroshima Nagasaki, and Perry doesn't think twice about it. He just accepts these things. And and that that is one thing I will say about this movie is uh, this movie does not meet the current year purity test. Uh, It doesn't even meet the Jimmy Kimmel current year parody test right this is a product of 2003 and so if you think back to the content you would see in 2003 and you think that's not for me this movie is definitely not for you or probably many cult films or or many cult films, but definitely not this one and there is 
we'll get probably to this a little later. There is some debate about some of the ethics of this movie, but for the most part, if you know, I, it's undeniably funny. Yes, it is very funny. I was sure one of my favorite gags in the film is Perry has this assistant named Burt Ward, and Burt insists on constantly bringing him lunch, regardless of what Perry, like, wants. So Perry will be trying to sit on the thing, and Burt will just be incre- bringing him increasingly more amounts of food until he's carrying, like, <laughs> just baskets of food. And Perry gets so mad at him because he'll, like be standing there like a lost puppy holding like a sandwich or some corn dogs or a salad and he'll keep trying to bring him to Perry and Perry will like shoo him away and then at one point Don is like bring that food over here and Perry's like no and Don's like bring that food over here and he just keeps like moving back and forth like he's a deer caught in the headlights it's like red light green light that right. game except with some poor guy holding a plate of food who also has a roll of toilet paper attached to his belt it's just like <laughs> hand out his napkin <laughs> he's a he's a very good personal assistant what was that what, what what's a gag you enjoyed oh um, man there's just so many i like like there was a very simple one and going back to perry just not noticing things like uh the producer john quincy adams office a has a giant dead cow in the corner <laughs> right? of this stuff. and it's not like Post, it's like on its back with with its legs up in the air and like tongue sticking out or something like that and it just Perry doesn't think twice about it but for some reason the male secretary there is just like he's some buff dude not wearing a shirt he's, he's like wearing like firefighter like like leader hosen well it's not quite leader hosen but like uh he's got the suspenders suspenders and pants and he, he <laughs> he's just there and I, I also, this was more impressive to me than super funny, but they, there's a scene where, you know, st- in the movie, in the movie, you know, the character Stone Fury is a, a hard-boiled sports private detective. And so they have a scene where they have Perry put all the stuff in a blender, blend it, and then drink it. Not only does he completely fill up this blender... He drinks all of it in one take. And then has to do it again. And then he does it again. I couldn't drink an entire blender worth of crap in it one setting. Give you like an idea. That. Things that we noticed in the blender. A slice of pizza. A donut. I think there was like some Chinese food in there. <laughs> I'm I'm sure they probably got him to put a raw egg in there. There is probably, yeah. Uh, and Perry is lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows he's lactose intolerant. Uh, and, of course, Perry Perry feels it uh, directly after this. But I, just watching him down two blenders worth of pain. He really does want to be a star. He wants to be a star. And that that's maybe for all the wrong reasons. But <laughs> As he puts it, like, at the beginning of the film, he does, he's not so much interested in being an actor as he's interested in being a star. And... The the other the, the other thing that I sometimes think about just when I'm thinking about this movie is the final segment is them going to the premiere and the majority of it is them in the limo and of course the limo driver's name is Travis Bickle who is Robert De Niro's character in Taxi Driver <laughs> but he's also like some unhinged crazy guy who is abs- apparently Perry does stuff with like underground music. I'm not sure how much of that is just Perry talking or is reality. But of course the the limo driver has his own mixtape and is really really proud of it and just keeps wanting to play it for Perry. And of course Don and Mole, you know, love the tape and Perry is just there wishing he could die. <laughs> um and that's funny, too, is his interplay with Don and Mole. Mole, uh, the character Mole, at least, uh, is just, like, this... Stoner? Like, this completely, like, burned-out, nutty cartoon character. And then you have, you know, Don, who kind of looks like a heavy Lex Luthor. Yeah, like, uh, kind yeah. Or a, somewhere between Lex Luthor and Kingpin, like, yes. you know, weight-wise. 
Well, and I mean, he is sometimes the straight man, and then sometimes he's right there with Mole just playing the dumbest guy in the room. And it's funny because they're like, both in a gaslighty way, but also in a kind of real way. Don is Perry's friend, but he's also Perry's arch nemesis. Watching the movie, I think I was impressed with Perry and that he, I think he only ever almost threw a punch once. Well, considering the reality he was accepting at the time, he would have been justified. Yeah, the the whole thing with the Japanese character Hiroshima Nagasaki is the <laughs> the director shows Perry this big table of food and says mostly donuts. It's, it's all American snack food. It's it's like Skittles and donuts and cheese pops. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the director is played by Bobcat Goldthwait. And yeah, he I think he also was the he's quote the, unquote he's director. the actual director. That's his actual. He's just playing himself. And he's like, Perry, this is for our overseas investors to impress them with uh, American food. Make sure nothing happens to this table. And, and uh, of course, Mole shows up and Perry is doing his just absolute damnedest to keep mole away from the table but of course it doesn't work and mole goes to grab a donut and knocks the whole table over and, and to make it even better when when perry is like putting his head and his hands in anger and frustration mole like he's not looking at mole and mole just flips the table <laughs> the rest of the way oh it's not even like oh i tripped into it more it's just flip and Don Don restrains Perry, but I think at that moment, Perry, if he had been free, would have murdered Mole in real life. Well, and Perry does this thing where, like, he'll get mad and he'll yell, but then he'll yell, yell like, so, like, loud and high-pitched, he hits, like, a octave that should be impossible for most people, and he has, like, this raspy scream, like... Yeah, Perry is... If... <sighs> I doubt he even knows who Sam Kinison is, but Perry is like Italian Sam Kinison. He his his comedy is yelling, but also his real life reality is also yelling. So right, well, and like I said, in just Perry's everyday life, he is just treading a very thin line between reality and just silliness. And even though I'm not sure how involved Don Barris with him is anymore, I mean that's what his podcast these days is is perry has a podcast and uh, a lot of it involves uh antagonizing but also just constant the prank is almost on perry even though it's also how perry supports himself perry uh thinks that he has met and hung out several times with tony hawk and (laughs) doesn't have that high opinion of tony hawk yeah so this is the thing with perry and it's, it's always a thing where i'm sort of conflicted on it and is that like I, I don't know how much of Perry's world is real. And I don't even know how much Perry knows how much his world is real. Um, and I'm not always sure just how much Perry is, is on the joke. Um, for instance, even Perry says that he knew, or at least knew parts of stuff that Windy City was fake. Don says that he absolutely didn't, that he's been shown it later, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even the way like Perry talks about things, even things that he kind of knows is fake, he also still kind of believes. Very interesting. Do you think Perry was in on this? I don't think Perry was in on it. I think Perry, I think Perry is only half aware of what's real and what's not real. Like, I I'm gonna guess he probably still thinks a movie is made in eight days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and he still has at the end, one of my other favorite scenes is at the end of the film, uh, the president of show business presents him with a trophy for Windy City Heat, which he has to this day. Yeah. But, and that's where this movie was a little bit controversial. And also part of the reason it's a cult film is, uh, Jimmy Kimmel got this movie made and I think he had a deal with Comedy Central. However, afterwards, uh, Comedy, I think it was Comedy Central that was mostly in charge, but whoever was owned the movie uh, basically played it in as few theaters as was contractually possible. Yeah. Um, Because after it was made, despite the fact it's hilarious, there was big questions about, you know, well, for one, there were some people who were against it because they're pretty much gaslighting a man who has some brain trauma or something, which 
I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm not a medical expert. I don't think that's why Perry is Perry. Uh, but the fact that it's a big gaslighting session in general, and frankly, a bit of a mean joke, kept this movie out of theaters and off of Comedy Central for the longest time. But people who did see it would were compelled to show other people, and in true cult faction, fashion, it's developed quite the following. Yeah, and there was there was going to be a sequel, but I forget the reason why, but Perry, I think it was over money, Perry sued, like, Don, Jimmy, and Mole, and... Yes, because he once, like, he either needed more money from the film or thought there should be royalties, though I'm not sure that this has ever had a... I think it had like one legal release. Yeah, I have I have no clue. I mean, I I know they did a DVD release of this movie, but that that Perry suing them pretty much just absolutely killed any chance of a sequel. I know that they did try to crowdfund for it and didn't make any money, but pretty much after this movie what happened was Adam Carolla, who is uh also a part of this movie, uh, ha- has his own like podcasting network and gave Perry, Don, and Mole a spot on that network. And they did the big three podcast for a while uh, until that fell apart. And though it went for quite a while, I think they're, as they describe themselves in the movies, they are kind of a modern Three Stooges. Yeah, which I think is something that Jimmy Kimmel gave them that name. And then after the Big Three podcast, I don't know really what Don or Mole actually do. Perry does Perry Caravello Live, which is was fun to watch, but now it's not a lot of fun to watch because his management sucks. Yeah, I I don't know the whole story. And obviously, it's kind of weird because Perry needs somebody to manage him. Uh, Perry cannot do that himself. But at the same time, the guy who does it, I don't know, it almost seems like he's taking advantage of Perry at the same. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a little, you know, tit for tat, if you will. You know, he manages the stream for Perry, you know, and then he gets some of the money. But I don't know. He kind of lords that power over him, it seems like. Yeah. I again, I'm not like a major viewer of it, but I remember watching it and having some a lot of fun moments then watching it and having a lot of man, this is kind of skeevy, and well, this guy sucks. But that that's that's besides the movie. That's no, the after well, the movie. Well, you know, we, we do a little after the movie. As far as what other people are doing, I think Don Barris still warms up the crowd for Jimmy Kimmel, which must be a hard job because why? how does Jimmy Kimmel even have a crowd? And, uh, <laughs> as far as uh, what Jimmy Kimmel's doing, he's still continuing to put on what might be the worst version of the late night show uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Kimmel really can be funny, and this movie is a, I mean, something where it's like, I'm glad Kimmel made this or helped be a part of making this, because this really is a a very funny and unique movie. Again, kind of like what I said at the beginning, how this might be the only prank movie of its kind where it is just one person being pranked rather than and artfully and and artfully like with a budget like there's leeway with perry because perry is again very oblivious to things that should be obvious to literally everyone but if you really think about the amount of work and effort that goes into like any any cast or crew member could blow it at any second in fact one thing I was thinking when watching it is it would be very easy to accidentally hire somebody who would maliciously go up in the middle of something and say, hey, Perry, you're being gaslit. Well, and, you know, obviously the Internet was around then, but with the extent of like social media now and stuff, you'd never be able to pull I, anything it, off quite like this. It would be very hard, but I mean, just the the amount of coordination required to usher Perry around and keep him semi in the dark about what's going on. Well, and Perry's the perfect victim in the sense that he is a lot like Daffy Duck. Like, 
I don't know. There's some people out there. I don't hate Perry at all. I think Perry is hilarious. There's a lot to like there. He also, though, has a lot of flaws. Yes, he's... And he is very quick to anger and even just left left to his own devices, he just can't help but to, you know, screw himself over like Daffy Duck. Yeah, no, like he, he is... Perry says the darndest things sometimes. But despite all of, you know, the things he does and says that are... Uh, very questionable he is likable like he's i i can't hate perry no and i I really like if you're one of those people who've got to put everybody through a purity test on whether or not you hate him you know you're gonna hate perry and even at the end when he receives the award for uh show business it's He's really happy, and in some weird way, I'm really happy for him. It's like, yeah, Perry, you deserve the award for greatest show business guy. I don't even remember what the award... I don't even know. He's just getting the award for, you know... It's it's from the president of show business. It has to be a big deal. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, this is Perry, like the greatest moment in Perry's life is receiving this giant gaudy trophy for show business <laughs> right well and the thing is too is i don't know it's i can see if people are upset about this joke on perry like i'm not gonna say like oh this is a nice thing to do but at the same time this movie was kind of a good thing for perry in a lot of ways uh one perry's main goal is to be a star and this is kind of the closest he's ever really come to like mainstream attention yeah and on and really just coasting off of you know, this movie and the big three podcast has been keeping him basically, you know, housed and fed for yeah until today. No, it's a it's a case of, well, I really, you know, wouldn't it be better if Perry made it as a star as like a stand up comedian? Thing is, is Perry is not he's not good at things. No, uh, it's it's kind of sad to think that his one ticket to stardom is being pranked but i don't think perry would have had any notoriety without this movie and without don and mole who i i do believe have actually despite being you know the friends who gaslight him do actually act in his interest outside of at least don i'm i'm unsure of uh tony Mm -hmm. just because like i think one of his retorts to this was well look at perry he's a terrible person i'm like (laughs) dude you spent this whole movie gaslighting a guy and uh you know oh but it's okay because he's the terrible person yeah i don't know don is kind of like i said i i look at him as both a friend and a nemesis figure for perry i think he is one of or at least was at one time one of penny perry's like few real friends he has kind of looked out for perry and helped him to make it in this niche comedy space however at the same time a lot of it has been at perry's expense so Mm -hmm. i don't know i i leave you to i'm not going to tell you that this movie was correct or that this is a good thing or a bad thing i'm just telling you that this movie is funny and that's really all we can say about this movie is it is funny you this may not be your thing uh this this is probably the most controversial uh, movie we've talked about yeah well from those who know about it yeah I and that's the thing is it's one of those movies where I mean I, I don't really know wh- how wide our audience is I know we get you know about 100 views of video and we're, uh, we're about everywhere you can find us for the people who know this movie this movie is typically like pretty beloved the person we learned about this was a YouTuber literally called Grease Wizard, and his his talking about the movie was, I don't watch movies, but I watch this movie because it's very funny. Well, and the other uh, thing is, too, is this is a very, despite being so obscure in some ways, it's very easy to watch this. Uh, you can find a nice cut of this film for free on YouTube. Yes, you can find the the 4K upscale version on YouTube. And I have a feeling that it will probably stay on YouTube for some time because I don't think Comedy Central wants to even think about owning this movie. No, this has definitely been disowned by its parents, but uh, 
I'm about to say too. It's also one of those things that several people have a copy of this movie. If it's ever taken down, it'll just show up everywhere else. Well, I know, I know we said that you know, it's been disowned, but I'm also under the impression that maybe it's just completely forgotten about. I know the way a lot of these companies work is they have all of this material, but they are completely like blind to owning anything. Yeah, like no, some movies, the reason they don't get released is literally people don't know they own the movie. Yeah, they've just, like, completely forgotten that somewhere in their copyright vault there is gold sitting there, uh, and it just it just ends up on YouTube. And that's to your benefit. If you want to see this, very easy to see, won't cost you a cent. All you have to do is have an internet connection. Yeah, I wish, though... <laughs> We didn't really talk a lot about production or anything like that, and sort of like how it is obscure, there's not a lot of information out there on it, which is right. another a lot, sad thing. There's a lot of information on Perry Caravello and that this movie exists, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, even, I mean, we told you a bit about Dawn and Mole, but there's not a lot of information on Dawn and Mole. Now, if you are interested in Dawn, I think he has a podcast now. I don't, it's obviously not the big three, but I think that he still does a version of the Ding Dong Show, or at least he did for a while, mm -hmm. uh, in podcast form. But, I mean, you can find his work out there. But, yeah, it's not like you're going to get a YouTube video that walks you through the making of Windy City Heat. Yeah, if you go to IMDb, the majority of the cast, including Perry, Don, and Mole, like, there's no profile picture for their names right. there's nothing on them well and what little i know about like the comedy store and stuff like that all come from uh, there was a article uh from grantland that was pretty good on this uh but i mean every other thing i saw about perry cites this article just to show you how little stuff there is yeah oh and before we forget perry has done more work he is a prisoner in the third Austin Powers movie during the Hard Knock Life rap sequence. And he is Simon S. Salty in the excellent Adult Swim show Smiling Friends. Uh, and yes, Perry always dresses like that with a fedora and leather jacket and fanny pack. But that that's what Perry has done since. And yeah, that's... That's that's Windy City. He, I know we, we didn't talk a lot about the movie, but it would be a, a crime for us to tell you every funny thing that happens in this movie. Uh, it, which there's a lot. Uh, it, for the hour and a half it runs, uh, every bit, there's like so many jokes per minute. Like, it's ridiculous. And it is a quick 92 minutes. Right. So if you're even on the fence with this, I just go ahead and watch it. It's free and short. Yeah, no. And it's funny. Uh, re this is a recommend from uh, Rambling Bones and the Duke. Go yep. and watch Windy City Heat. Which puts things back in my court here. I've decided I'd like to double dip and it's my turn again. No, nope, not happening. <laughs> not happening. So we're going to, we tried something a little different here, but we're going to kind of go back to the start here and we're going to do another classic 50s B movie. In this case, we're going to do black scorpion you know it's it's probably good to to go back to our roots our roots as if we're like what this will be our this is our 12th episode uh, yeah. i think wow well, now that we've made it so big we've got to go back <laughs> where we started <laughs> yeah no we, we've got to we've got to go back and find ourselves from from where we started <sighs> all this fame has gone straight to our heads <laughs> hey though we do uh, we do appreciate you guys i've uh, looked at a lot of podcasts there are podcasts that have been on longer than us and haven't even gotten this much traction so you know we we appreciate you guys uh thanks for coming in and uh you know just spread the word yeah no thank you wherever you're listening to us we are everywhere, everywhere. Um, we have an Instagram that you should follow. Yeah, you you need to like the post. It hurts my feelings when uh, I don't get likes. Yeah, uh, uh, the the Duke runs the Instagram, uh, <laughs> and so he's very emotionally invested in its success, more so than the podcast. Um, oh, I hate <laughs> uh, but Bones edits the podcast, so he thinks he does everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. I also run the the bit where it gets uploaded places, but. Uh, I think that's it for our shilling. Uh, yeah, that was a good shill. Yeah, thank you for listening. 
and uh, goodbye. And keep it cold. Cool.